you are now watching Average is Failure, the Black Future Edition with Vaughn Edmead, a.k.a. Coach Vaughn, where we talk about black social issues and black culture and how to empower our communities for the future. All right, what's happening, y'all? Coach Vaughn here. So I just wanted to talk really quickly about some of the issues that I think we as black people do need to address. Now, I understand that, of course, the problems usually are as simple as they seem, okay? So I'm not trying to say that if we do this, everything will all of a sudden be solved. But I think one of the things that we don't do is try to attack all the issues that we're gonna talk about all at the same time. And all of these things affect each other. So you almost have to gradually approach all of them simultaneously, okay? Just addressing one by itself will never really help you. Uh, it can, well, it can help, but, but I think the reason why it's taking so long is because we don't address all of them at the same time. And it's possible to address them at the same time. It's going to require hard work, but it's possible to address them at the same time. So um, one of the first things that I think we often talk about the family unit and how important the family unit is to the development of black community, right? So I think that we really need to do more work on that front. And I'm not just talking about fathers being the live, lives of their children. But what I'm really talking about is, even before that, developing healthy marriages, okay? So, and let, let's just call it healthy relationships in general, okay? Healthy relationships. Okay, so in healthy relationships, we're talking about the relationships between husband and wife, okay? And setting that foundation for the relationship between father and son, father and daughter, mother and son, mother and daughter, all right? And then how does that, how do these, those healthy relationships in turn affect the rest of the family, the grandparents, the uncles, the aunties, the cousins, all right? Um, grandchildren, but then also, and maybe we can make this another one. How does this then affect how we operate or how we relate to and engage with our community, right? So we all understand that when there's a breakdown in family relationships, your, your family relationships are really the, the starting point of your training of how to handle other types of relationships. So when we don't handle these well, when we don't understand even things like how to date well, how to choose a spouse, forget just having a healthy relationship, how do we even go about dating, all right, and get into that point, that it can affect how we operate within the community, okay? Because we don't have healthy relationships here, it's hard to have healthy relationships there. And what do I mean by that? Imagine, if you don't see how people work through issues and solve problems in a healthy way in your family relationships, then one of the things we always talk about is supporting black businesses or what have you, right? Well, how do you support businesses and other healthy organi other organizations within the community um, and other people in the community if you have never seen that modeled at home, okay? So those are some of the things. Another thing that I think I, I mentioned it before is, I'm gonna call it ownership, okay? And when I say ownership, I'm referring to um, owning businesses, Sorry for my sloppy handwriting. And I'm also referring to owning property. Okay? So these are some of the things when we talk about we live in a capitalist society, that's just the way it is, and we have to operate within that game. So if we can understand how to own, ownership gives us leverage that we can then turn into wealth and prosperity and begin to um, affect change amongst our people and, and, and allow our, uh, our people to have more opportunity, okay? Another thing is, um, let's talk, let's say finances, okay? Staying out of debt. And not spending, right? on frivolous things. And we can get into that 
you know, in the future. But a lot of times, and nothing wrong with style or what have you, right? I Trust me when I say I love style, okay? But sometimes we can have a tendency to do way more spending on style than on things that are going to actually take the community to another level, right? Um, so healthy relationships, community, ownership, finances, okay? Education, all right? So with the, with the specifically, um, you know, many people are doing work. I love Dr. Chris M, Christopher M. Dim's work, and he's doing a lot of work as far as uh, K through 12 education and maybe even some college education, right? Um, and I'm doing a lot of work myself as far as um, educating adults, okay, and adult learning, all right? But I want to see more of our people get to the point where they graduate college, right, and they do so with honors, okay? So graduating college and doing so with honors. Now, for me personally, um, I, undergrad, I slipped up. Undergrad, I did graduate, but I graduated with a whack GPA, all right? And now I wish I could go back because I'm like, yo, I would knock it out the park now. But luckily, in graduate school, I was able to have a second chance and graduated with a 3.8 GPA, okay? So you, we can turn these things around. But how, much, how many opportunities have I missed out on because I didn't do it at, uh, in the undergraduate level? You see what I'm saying? So, and then uh, aside from education, the last thing I'll put up here, even though, my, uh, again, listen, I understand there are many more. We, we can talk about, um, you know, the psychological issues, all right? But I may not be qualified to talk about it on a grand scale, but hopefully I can bring some people in who can have those conversations with us. But uh, education, and then I would say careers, right? And let me say careers, what I re really mean by careers is professionalism, okay? The reason why I'm talking about professionalism is because Again, it's the, it's the framework in which we operate, okay? If you are a doctor or if you are a lawyer, then you're probably going to make more money than an, uh, another occupation that's not a professional occupation. You see what I'm saying? Um, and, and, and listen, I'm not saying that it has to be that, but what I'm saying is, is find something, a teacher, something to where you, you can expect that you will come out making uh, uh, some money enough to take care of yourself and to take care of your family. And listen, so, so it may not necessarily be that your education is college education, right? So I don't want us to think that I'm limiting us to college. It might be that we go to a vocational school, a training school, a trade school, all right? Um, it might be that you go to um, just an apprenticeship underneath somebody so that you can get into the plumbing trades and you can get into um, HVAC, okay? But these are the things that we need to do and to do well. We need to help, under oh, so this is what, what I will put in, all right? And this is probably the most important one, all right? Self, oh man, this is big. This is big, y'all. I hope y'all can see this on the screen. Self-awareness. Why is self-awareness so important? Because I believe the challenge that we have in our community is that because we have not become self-aware, it's hard for us to operate in all of these spaces. And when I say self-aware, I'm talking about really understanding who we are and who we have been designed to be, okay? Who, who, wh what are our strengths personally? What, the reason why I'm switched up my, even my style of, of doing videos is because I realized that my, my strength lies in more so teaching than in motivating. And so there can be a level of inspiration in my, te in my teaching, but I'm really probably more of a teacher than strictly a motivator, all right? So self-awareness, understand where are our strengths, where are our weaknesses, where do we have some a SWOT analysis, where do we have some opportunities, and what are some threats to us, so that we can make good decisions based on who God has designed us to be, okay? And then from there, helping other people to do the same. So if I'm self-aware, then I know what career, I, it, it's easier for me to choose and understand what kind of career should I probably look into that I can really operate best and I can bring my whole self to that career, all right? Once I started becoming more and more self-aware, all of a sudden I found myself in a position to where now I do have 
a job that is way better and pays me way more than any other job that I had in the past. But it, it, I had to do the hard work. It was very hard work. And this thing happened in stages, okay, of becoming self-aware. And so what I'll do is we'll discuss some of these things in more detail later on. And hopefully I can help you all become more self-aware also and, and, and figure out how to jump into some of these opportunities, okay? But I just want to lay that out there as a groundwork, and we'll continue to build on this as we go forward. I'm going to bring in some of my friends, some people, some of my network, um, so that we can all do some learning together, all right? So that's it for me, man. Um, it, Vaughn Ed me. I'm here. I'm just trying to help. That's it. Just trying to help. All right? Average is failure. All right? And we're going to develop a great black future, man. So let's continue to get it. Um, yeah, great. We're going to be powerful, y'all. We're getting powerful. How could you be so?